So Marcus, we've done a series of videos now yep. on premature collapsing of surface wiring systems. Yep. If there's a fire, can we prevent it from collapsing and therefore prevent entanglement of, say, yeah, people of and fire yeah. officers? Yeah. We've shown that for a number of surface wiring systems, including plastic conduit, mini trunking, and PVC, PVC twin and CPC, twin and earth cables. Yeah. However, we're going to be involved in doing electrical installation condition reports. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Where we're going to see loads of surface wiring system that hasn't been prevented from collapsing in the event of a fire. Yeah. What's your thinking on that? So as you probably know, Gaz, in industry, there's been a lot of debate, especially on social media, yeah. whether we should code it as a C2 or a C3. I think the best person to ask is Darren Staniforth from the NRC. Yeah, of course it is. So it's my great pleasure to be joined by Darren Staniforth from the NIC, who's going to clarify for us about the coding of wiring systems when we're doing an electrical installation condition report about premature collapsing of those wiring systems for us, Darren. Yeah, and, and this comes off the back of uh, what guidance we're giving from our helpline as well. So those ringing into NIC, EIC or the Alexa helpline will get the same sort of answers. You need to consider where the risk is. So if we take a small domestic dwelling where there's one cable that could cause entanglement, at that point there, people can recognise that as a C3 for okay. that point there. If, however, the entanglement really is in an area. So if we go outside that small individual dwelling and we start to go into now somewhere, let's say a thoroughfare, where it has been denoted that that is the true route out and the em emergency evacuation. So fire brigade are using that to get in and out. Everyone's going to be using that to get out as well. Say a communal area of a staircase of a block of flats, for instance. At that point there, if that could cause entanglement problems at that point, then it will be a C2 at that point. So again, that's that's whether it's a C3 or a C2, depends very much where it is and the amount of risk that comes with it. The amount of risk also being the number of conductors that are in that containment maybe that collapse, is that part of it? No, no, yeah. not, not really the conductors. This is a really about trying to get them people out. So it doesn't matter whether it's one conductor or a hundred conductors, it's about can you get out to stop entanglement. So have a look at the notes part of it, that regulation, and it's all about stopping that entanglement. So we take the intent of the regulation, the regulation says to stop premature collapse, and it's again really for things that are uh, clipped surface or something like that, anything yep. that's on the surface of the fabric of the building, not within the fabric of the building, nope. so anything that's surface. At that point there, it's about how much risk is there, and if it's just one cable that could drop slightly and that point there, it's going to be a C3. If, it, however, it could come down and stop the fire brigade coming in to get you out or stopping you getting out, that thoroughfare, like I said, a block of flats maybe where you're looking at a communal set of escape routes, C2 for that one. Thank you ever so much for clearing that up. So then, Marcus, what does BS 7671 say about the requirements for prevention of premature collapsing of the wiring system? Okay, Gaz, so in Chapter 52 and the Regulation 521.10.202, which you can see on the screen, it states that wiring systems shall be supported such that they will not be liable to premature collapse in the event of a fire. And this comes along with some different notes as well. It gives us a bit more guidance on what this regulation is talking about. So the first note, wiring systems hanging across access routes, talking about any point where you may enter or exit a building. So that's not just doors, it could be across windows, etc. Yeah, it could be, yeah, definitely. Okay. Note two, cables installed in or on steel cable containment systems, maybe cable basket, things like that. Okay. They will already meet the requirements okay. of this regulation. Because the metallic structure yeah. of the support is in place anyhow, is that it right? It is, yes, yeah. Okay. Also note three, this regulation precludes, for example, the use of non-metallic cable clips or cable ties as the sole means of support. So Marcus, we're not suggesting that every single wiring system that's now installed is going to have to have a metallic fixing, metallic saddle, metallic tie, are we? No, Gaz, definitely not. Later on in note three, it goes on to talk about the need for surface wiring systems to be supported. So are we talking about perhaps a mini trunking on a wall? Or are we talking about maybe twin and CPC cables that are clipped to the fabric of the building on the surface? Are we suggesting they're going to have to have some sort of metallic fixing? Yeah, definitely. And also maybe PVC conduit drops and things like that. However, Gaz, not every single one of them supports for the surface wiring system will need to be of a metallic material. From note four, we can take that they only need to be suitably spaced on the installation itself. Thanks for clarifying that, Marcus. So we now know that it isn't every single fixing on a surface wiring system that has to be non-combustible, in other words, metallic, 
So Marcus, to finish this off, do BS7671 give us any guidance on the distance between these non-combustible supports? No, unfortunately it doesn't, Gary. So it's actually down to the individual to deem what they believe is suitable for that installation and what is going to actually prevent that warning system becoming a problem in the event of let's say a fire. Okay, thank you.